Hello, I am Sir Mike. Let us discuss the human person in their environment. Imagine contemplating how we as individuals relate to the world around us. This gets really interesting when we look at the ideas of ancient philosophers who lived before the time of Socrates. These thinkers asked some big questions about life, nature, existence, and origin of all things around us. By looking at the world through their eyes, we can better understand how we fit into the bigger picture of our environment. Their old but wise thoughts can help us see how our lives are connected to everything, even in our modern world. By the end of this, we will be able to identify and notice the disorder in our environment, notice things that is not where they should be and place them in a proper way, show how taking care of our environment benefits our health, well-being, and sustainable development, and lastly, show our goodness and values of being cautious and resourceful in saving our environment. Our best hope is to understand the interplay between humans and their environment. While it is commonly known that philosophy in the Western world began in Greece, technically speaking, the earliest philosophical thinking occurred in Asia, specifically in the region of modern-day Turkey called Miletus. Interestingly, this city was part of the Greek Empire and functioned as a city-state during that time. The Milesian philosophers are part of the Ionian tradition. Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes were early thinkers who wanted to know why things happen and what basic ideas everything comes from. These philosophers believe that everything comes from just one of these things. They are called monists. They thought the world is made of primary element, either water, air, or infinite, boundless. Malaysian philosophers try to understand how the world exists by observing, studying, and understanding the heavenly bodies and other things in nature. This way of thinking is called naturalism because they look at the world to explain things. Let us meet Thales. Thales is recognized as the father of philosophy, even though he didn't technically use the word philosophy or philosopher. However, he was involved in philosophical activities. He was the first person mentioned by Aristotle under the Presocratic philosophy. Thales of Biletus was a very old Greek thinker who was really good at questioning about things which is doing philosophical activities in the environment and mathematics. It is widely recognized that he is one of the first ever philosophers in the West. Thales is particularly known for his contributions to the field of natural philosophy, which laid the foundation for what later became known as science, particularly naturalism or natural science. When we say naturalism, it is a way of thinking that focuses on the natural world and how it works. It is all about looking at things around us and trying to find logical and scientific explanation for them. It is like using our senses and our brains to figure out why things happen and how they happen in the natural world. He created the word cosmos, the first word to describe the universe. He emphasized the importance of observing and understanding the natural world through rational thought rather than attributing events to the whims of gods and myths. Thales liked to figure out why things start and where they came from. A lot of people think he was the first scientist ever. He was different because he looked for real reason behind things, not just stories. He marked a shift from mythological explanations of natural phenomena. This way of thinking is called again naturalism because he looked for natural, logical reason for why things happen in the world. Thales believed that water is the first cause of everything in the world. He said it is like the starting point for everything 
and where everything comes back to. Think of it like this. Just like plants need water to live, and if animals don't have water, they cannot survive. Even seeds need moisture to grow. Thales thought that heat, like from the sun, also comes from moisture and is kept alive by it. So he really thought water was super important for everything in life. He knew that a solar eclipse was going to happen in 585 BC. He knew this because he learned things from Egypt due to military campaign of Greece against Persia. He demonstrated his interest in astronomy and his ability to apply rational thought to natural phenomena. I'm acquainted with Anaximander. Anaximander was one of the students of Thales. He agreed with his teacher that there exists a singular fundamental substance from which everything originates. However, he did not attribute this to water or any other specific element. He believed in something even more primary as water or moisture can be found in various forms everywhere. For him, water is merely one specific element among many others. He coined the term aperion to describe the universe. The aperion, or the infinite boundless, serves as the origin of everything, the first principle. According to his theory, the aperion is undefined and in constant motion. This perpetual motion led to the creation of the heavens. Initially, he theorized that aperion was when warmth and coldness separated. From this, moisture emerged and subsequently earth and air formed. Anaximander suggested that the basic material that makes up everything is not a particular element like water as Thales thought, but an indefinite, boundless, and eternal principle called the aperion. This concept marked a significant departure from earlier thinkers and introduced a more abstract idea of how the world is made up. He also suggested that the universe began from the aperion and that everything come into existence by separating and becoming different from each other. He said that the aperion was enclosed by a cylindrical shape as presented on the picture and that objects in the sky such as the sun, moon, and star formed from condensed matter. When it comes to evolution of life, Anaximander proposed the idea that humans and other animals could have gradually developed from simpler forms over an extended span of time, the entry point of theory of evolution. This idea represented an early attempt to explain the diversity of life without resorting to mythological explanations. He held the belief that life originated from the sea, and as time passed, living organisms, transitions, or evolved from the sea to land. According to him, people evolved from distinct kinds of creatures. Anaximander first draw a map of the inhabited world. He is recognized for crafting one of the earliest documented world maps. His map depicted the known lands of that era and introduced the concept of lines indicating latitude and longitude. He also devised a celestial sphere which served as both an astronomical and cosmological model. Anaximander is said to have come up with the idea for the gnomon, which is the upright part of the sundial that casts a shadow to show the time. Get to know Anaximenes Anaximenes is said to have been a student of Anaximander. He challenged the idea of the boundless being the origin of everything as he considered it overly vague and abstract. Anaximenes' idea have been seen as a bridge between those of his two predecessors, Thales and Anaximander. He identified air as the essential substance viewing it as being transformed into other classical elements such as fire, wind, clouds, water, and earth through the process of thickening and thinning. 
Pag-anak si Menes, while air may be invisible, its presence becomes apparent as long as we can breathe. Air, just as our soul, as it holds us together, just as we need to breathe to live. This connection between breath and air encompasses the entire world. Unlike Anaximander's infinite boundless, air is tangible than to that infinite boundless. Anaximenes believed that air, due to its high susceptibility to change and constant motion, can shift into various forms of matter through condensation and rarefaction processes. Anaximenes studied how air behaves in the context of the water cycle. He noticed that when air is blown through pursed lips, it feels cold due to rarefaction, where air particles spread out and cause cooling. Conversely, when air is blown with an open mouth, it feels warm due to condensation, where air particles come together and generate warmth. These observations help him shape his ideas about air being the fundamental substance and how it could change its properties. Anaximenes believed that the world remained motionless by hovering like a lid, covering the air below it. According to his ideas about the world's origin, air underwent condensation, forming the flat expanse of the earth. He described this earth as having a shape similar to a table and it was tilted. Anaximenes tried to explain the causes of natural phenomena. He assumed that earthquakes happened due to it either insufficient moisture causing the earth to fracture or an excess of water resulting in cracks in the earth's surface. He believed that lightning occurred when strong air forcefully separated clouds, generating a brilliant fairy flash. Rainbows, on the other hand, were formed when densely compressed air is touched by the rays of the sun. Let us rediscover Pythagoras. He is often credited with being one of the early figures to use the term philosophy. Pythagoras an ancient Greek philosopher and mathematician is best known as the founder of the Pythagorean school of thought. Pythagoras held the belief that the universe is structured according to numerical principles and that everything is a reflection of analogies and geometric relationships. In this intricate worldview, numbers, music, and philosophy were intricately linked. Pythagoras established the Pythagorean School, a center of philosophical and mathematical exploration. Pythagoreans passionately championed the study of mathematics. They perceived numbers as not merely controlling the physical realm, but as vessels containing profound truths about the nature of reality itself. This perspective contributed to the foundation of mathematical philosophy influencing subsequent philosophical and mathematical developments. The Pythagoreans led an ascetic lifestyle, practicing self-restraint and refraining from indulging in various pleasures, including certain foods. Their commitment to vegetarianism and their emphasis on the significance of camaraderie were integral to their way of life. The Pythagoreans embraced the concept of transmigration of souls, asserting that the soul can migrate from one body to another following death. This cycle of life and death was believed to involve reincarnation across various forms, including dust, plants, animals, and humans. Interestingly, the Pythagoreans avoided consuming certain foods such as peas, this dietary choice was rooted in their spiritual convictions as they believed that these foods contain the soul of their departed relatives. Pythagoras was also famously known for the Pythagorean theorem, which describes the relationship between the sides of a right triangle, a cornerstone in the realms of both geometry and mathematics. He was a pioneering thinker who conceptualized 
the brain as the locus of both sensory perception and cognitive faculties. Let us learn Xenophanes. Xenophanes made noteworthy contributions to ancient Greek philosophy, particularly within the realms of metaphysics, epistemology, and theology. According to Xenophanes, the world is made of a single underlying substance or principle which he referred to as the one or the whole. He believed that this underlying principle was a divine and eternal entity that encompassed everything in existence. Xenophanes questioned the anthropomorphic attributes of gods or the human-shaped god. He is often remembered for criticizing the traditional gods of Greek stories, which people imagine to be like humans. He explained this by saying that if animals like oxen, horses, or lions could draw, they have made their gods look like themselves, as oxen, horses, or lions. This show how people tend to think of gods as like themselves or their surroundings. Xenophanes strongly criticized the idea of having human traits and behaviors to the traditional Greek gods. He thought that these gods were simply created by people's imaginations and didn't represent any higher moral or ethical values. Instead, he suggested a different idea of God, one that is singular, unchanging, and all-encompassing. This perspective is like an early version of believing in one all-powerful God, monotheism, because he thought there's just one divine source that goes beyond human-like images. This criticism set the stage for future philosophical talks about what divinity truly is and how gods are connected to concepts of right and wrong. Xenophanes suggested that the earth's form was molded by natural processes over a span of time, which was quite different from the usual myth-based explanations. So this is the prelude of the concept of Pangea, that scientists understand the Earth's history and how the world have shifted and changed over millions of years. He also highlighted the fossilized marine life discovered on mountaintops as proof of the Earth's transformation or evolution. This can be seen as an early example of using direct observations from nature to understand how the world works. Xenophanes challenged the reliability of human knowledge. For him, people typically tend to confidently assert that their beliefs are true and accurate representations of reality. However, he questioned whether humans could ever achieve complete knowledge. He believed that human perceptions and comprehensions had limitations and could be mistaken. Allow us to meet Heraclitus. Heraclitus was an ancient Greek philosopher and one of the pre-Socratic philosophers. He is often referred to as the obscure due to the aloof and paradoxical nature of his writings. Heraclitus' contribution to philosophy revolved around his ideas on change, there is no forever, the nature of reality, and the unity of opposites. He used fire to express his concept of origin of the environment. He famously used the element of fire as a symbol to represent his philosophy of constant change and flux. Heraclitus saw fire as a metaphor for change because it is dynamic, ever-shifting, and transformative. Just as fire is constantly changing and transforming the substances it interacts with, Heraclitus believed that the entire universe was in a state of continuous change. Everything originates from fire, and in the process of eternal cycles, everything returns to it once more. Fire transforms into water and earth, and this transformation is reciprocated. Water and earth also turn back into fire. One of his most famous sayings is, you cannot step into the same river twice, which illustrates his belief that everything is in a state of constant flux and change. Heraclitus believed that change was the fundamental nature of the universe 
and that everything was interconnected. Heraclitus posited that all things in nature are in a state of perpetual flux. Change is the only thing that doesn't change. He also introduced the concept of the unity of opposites, expressing that conflicting elements are necessary for balance and harmony in the world. For example, he argued that war and peace, hot and cold, day and night are interdependent and create something. He described the world as logos. Heraclitus used the term logos to describe his understanding of the world. In his philosophy, logos signifies an underlying principle or order that governs the universe. It encompasses the idea of a natural, divine force that maintains harmony amidst the constant change and flux that he believed characterizes the world. The concept of Logos in Heraclitus' philosophy bears significant resemblance to the way the term is used in the Gospel of St. John. In Heraclitus' philosophy, Logos signifies the rational organization and interconnection present within the universe. Similarly, in the Gospel of St. John, the word or Logos is employed to depict the divine creative power that brings the world into existence and communicate spiritual truths. Get introduced to Parmenides. Parmenides is a younger contemporary of Heraclitus. He is the opposite of his predecessor, Heraclitus. Parmenides argued that change and plurality were mere illusions and that true reality is an eternal, unchanging, and undivided existence. He introduced the radical concept that our senses can be misleading and that genuine understanding requires reliance on reason and rational thinking. He was dissatisfied with the philosophical views of his predecessors. He believed that the entire universe consists of one thing which never changes, has no parts, and can never be destroyed. He calls this single entity as the one. Parmenides challenged Heraclitus' premise that change is the only thing that doesn't change. For him, he firmly believed that the world must encompass an element of permanence that is eternal, unchanging, and undivided. Parmenides asserted that what is, or true reality, is unchanging and eternal, while what is not refers to the realm of illusions and falsehoods. This idea had profound implications for his view of reality and knowledge, emphasizing the importance of discerning between the changing truth and the fleeting appearances that deceive our senses. He is recognized as the founder of the Eleatic School of Philosophy, which was a prominent philosophical tradition in ancient Greece. Notable philosophers who were associated with this school include Zeno of Eleia and Milesus of Samos. They further developed and expanded upon Parmenides' idea, contributing to the growth of this philosophical tradition. This school focused on metaphysical inquiries and sought to understand the fundamental nature of reality. Parmenides made a groundbreaking contribution to the field of natural science as well, is credited with being the first thinker to deduce that Earth is spherical in shape. This demonstrates his keen observations and willingness to explore not only abstract concepts but also the physical world. This is the prelude notion that Earth is not flat but a spherical shape which later revealed and defended by Copernicus and Galilee. To know Empedocles. Empedocles was an ancient Greek philosopher, poet, and scientist. He stood apart from his predecessors by embracing pluralism rather than subscribing to the monist idea of a single fundamental element that constitutes the universe. Empedocles is famous for proposing the theory that all matter is composed of four fundamental elements such as earth, water, air, and fire. He believed that these elements combined and separated through the forces of love and strife, or attraction 
and repulsion, leading to the formation of the physical world. He believed that the universe underwent cycles of combination and separation influenced by these opposing forces. This cyclical cosmology contributed to early Greek ideas about the origins and evolution of the cosmos. Let us meet Anaxagoras. Anaxagoras was an ancient Greek philosopher in what is now modern-day Turkey. Anaxagoras proposed that the basic substance of the universe is infinitely divisible and that Everything consists of small particles called nous, mind or intellect. The universe is organized and governed by this cosmic mind, which is responsible for creating order out of chaos. Anaxagoras departed from the mythological explanations of natural phenomena that were prevalent in his time. He sought to provide the rational and scientific explanations for the workings of the natural world, attributing phenomena to natural causes rather than actions of gods. He suggested that the moon had mountains and valleys, which indicated his attempts to understand celestial bodies through naturalistic observations. Be familiarized with Democritus. Democritus was an ancient Greek philosopher and polymath an individual who possesses expertise in a wide range of fields. He is primarily known for his pioneering work in the field of atomism, which laid the foundation for modern atomic theory. Democritus claimed that all things are comprised of atoms, atomos, which means indivisible, incapable of being cut. He is most famous for developing the theory of atomism which proposed that everything in the universe is composed of indivisible and indestructible particles called atoms. He believed that atoms vary in size, shape, and arrangement, and that their interactions give rise to the diversity of the material world. He is a skeptic regarding the reliability of our senses. He contends that color and taste lack inherent reality. Instead, our senses perceive them as such as he contends that color and taste lack inherent reality. Instead, our senses perceive them as such due to sensory interactions. He introduced the concept of indeterminism, which suggests that the universe operates based on the interaction of atoms without any predetermined fate or divine intervention. He believed that events occur due to natural causes rather than the influence of gods. Democritus contributed to ethical philosophy by emphasizing the pursuit of inner happiness or eudaimonia through moderation and self-control. He believed that understanding the natural world and aligning one's desires with reason could lead to a content and fulfilled life. The Presocratic philosophers were ancient Greek thinkers who lived before the time of Socrates and focused on fundamental questions about our environment, the nature of the world. They were driven by a quest of, to discover the primary cause or substance that underlies all of existence. Through keen observation, inquisitive minds, and philosophical reasoning, each of these philosophers propose unique theories to explain the origin and nature of our world and our environment. Thales believed that it is water. Anaximander proposed that there is an infinite boundless. Anaximenes introduced that it is air. Pythagoras argued it is the numbers. Xenophanes postulated that it is the one. Heraclitus offered it is fire. Parmenides re-echoed that it is the one. Empedocles combined water, air, fire, and earth. Anaxagoras raised a premise that it is the mind, while Democritus assimilated it is atom. Technology, devices, and equipment in pre-Socratic era were significantly more limited compared to our today's standards. While some of their ideas might appear outdated, 
obsolete or unconventional to us now, what remains crucial to acknowledge is that they are brave and unafraid enough to ask questions about our environment, our world, endeavored to provide explanations for the phenomena that envelop us. This they achieve by closely observing and comprehending the tangible elements within our environment. Through the contemplations of these pre-Socratic philosophers who adeptly delve into the natural causes of environment and world, exploring concepts such as water, infinite boundless air, numbers, fire, earth, the one, and atoms, we have achieved a more intricate comprehension of our reality. We have harnessed these foundational elements and discoveries to propel advancements in science, technology, and society. This endeavor is driven by the imperative to meet the burgeoning demands of society given the scarcity of resources. In light of these strides in development and innovation, let us remain vigilant in acknowledging and understanding the intricacies of our environment. I will ask you to observe the transformations occurring in our geography as depicted in the image. It is evident that there has been a substantial decline in the Philippine forest covering when comparing the years 1900s and 2010. We can readily observe the significant transformation of Metro Manila where lush green spaces from the past have been given to the urban landscape dominated by towering gray and black skyscrapers today. Humanity has not always been kind to our natural surroundings. Consider the case of the Sierra Madre, which has traditionally served as a natural shield against typhoons. However, due to rampant deforestation and development, we now witness the consequences in the form of floods and other calamities where people bear the cost of our actions. We need not look far for examples. Our school environment serve as a case in point. Observe the trash bins. Despite waste segregation policies, it is disheartening to note that the very institutions we consider formal training grounds for society often ironically nurture individuals who may not fully adhere to responsible practices. Being a member of the Global South and ASEAN and grappling with poverty, the Philippines is no stranger to the appeal of consuming items like Tetra Packs and sachet due to their affordability in tingi or small sizes. Yet, it is essential to pause, reflect, and consider the environmental repercussions of these choices. These waste products not only negatively impact humanity, but also affect the other inhabitants of our environment the co-creatures we share this world with. As young individuals and future members of society, how can we actively and concretely demonstrate our care for environment? How can we embody the virtues of prudence and frugality when it comes to our surroundings? Despite widespread global efforts to address these pressing issues, the depletion of our environment, the degradation of our planet, the thinning of our ozone layer, and the acceleration of global warming persists. The Earth's vitality is dwindling rapidly. How can we actively contribute to caring for our environment and being a part of the solution? 